came here in the on the mountains to fly my uh, DJA Phantom drone and I figured that my remote control is not responding to any button so I can't turn it on but I'm, I, I'm sure it's on but it doesn't turn on it's on internally and um, so I try all sort of uh, combination button combinations and uh, you know I know it's alive and I had this problem like uh, this is the third or fourth time and uh, the uh, on one side it was getting warm and I knew it's alive so the circuitry is, is broadcasting or something but the CPU is uh, messed up so in order to restart it I have to disconnect the battery and you've seen this thing is online but I'll show you how I did it so you don't have to learn from me learn from whoever I show you this exact the same technique so you can remove this four screws you need a uh, Torx would work but an Allen key works better for these four screws but you don't have to but it's easier and safer they are uh, there is a flat cable here for this model I have another model for Phantom 4 that has an USB here and that one has a wider cable like a flat, uh, flex flat cable flexible uh, flat cable uh, it's like a ribbon type of cable and it's connecting here so if you are careful you don't have to remove these four screws but you need to remove this other four screws which uh, require a small Felix Phillips screwdriver and um, in order to reach some screws you need to remove uh, some of the uh, rubber padding and I have double side tape so you just need to peel it off peel out I did not put it back on because the glue wears out and I use different uh, double side tape and it did not last so for now I don't use those and also at the bottom there are some sort of uh, rubber legs you need to pop pop those out and watch when you put them back uh, they have a notch here so mate the two sides properly otherwise you, that that one will come out and then uh, you uh, using the screwdriver remove these ones and now you need to crack this one open just a tiny bit maybe two three centimeters but don't pull hard because like I said you may break that connector inside I mean that that flat cable the flexible cable and if you want to have a look there is a flexible cable which now is kind of stretching so I don't want to pull hard because uh, it's my only remote so if I look inside there is an LED light light up but I cannot turn the remote on but the electronics are alive see so it's some dumb firmware that causes this issue so the only uh, thing I can do for it to get the uh, CPU out of that loop or whatever it does is to pull the power connector the, the, the battery power connector out so there is a tab a locking tab on on that side so I need to squeeze it with my hand squeeze but you make sure you don't don't wreck that cable when you if you have big hands or if you are impatient you will wreck that flex uh, uh, flexible cable right there in the in the middle so i'll show you once i take that one out i'll show you how the connector looks like so you know what to expect now the connector is out and you see this tab it's part of this locking mechanism so you need to press on the top and will unlock then gently pull it out right then once you put it back the remote should wake up properly like a restart you feel 
it pops in properly then let's see it's awake right so it does something I don't know why it's that why it does that it's not related to the cold it's not related to anything stupid I do and I don't charge it while it is on so if I charge it it's off all the time so firmware issues I updated it and it does the same thing but anyway that's my remote maybe yours doesn't do the same thing and I installed an external antenna because guess what uh, so I installed a coaxial cable and uh, 5.8 gigs uh, external antenna so this is the ground and this is the active element it's short but you know it works and I I drove it uh, I flown uh, two kilometers away with this antenna so it, this thing must have lots of power into the, uh, the into the radio into the 5.8 gigs radio and I'll show you what antenna I use so that's my uh, parabolic antenna. I sh I uh, record this one in, recorded in different uh, video. So that antenna comes out. It's an SMA connector, and I connect this SMA connector with a pigtail to a, a 5.8 gigs antenna. And at some point, I lost signal with that thing, with that uh, little little antenna, which is way better than the one that is built into one of these two antennas so one of these two let me see which is the one one on the right hand side has two antennas built in so i disconnected the one inside uh, because once this one is close or back to back to the 2.4 gigs antenna the video data link uh, antenna so if this is a 4k camera and doesn't use an analog link uh, the old uh, phantom use analog data i mean analog uh, signals but this is uh, all uh, wi-fi so the camera broadcast to wi-fi so i disconnected the antenna from inside here and i connect an external so i'm getting better signal because it's less noise from the other antenna so this is uh, also I can bend this thing, I can move it left, right, so sometimes uh, the drone is up in the air and I take the remote and I I see signal, it's a signal lost, okay, okay, I'm screwed, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting panicked, okay, where the drone is, I see it on a map, the last uh, spot, I, I, I see up, uh, maybe that's the drone, yeah, I think so, and uh, then if it goes let's say it goes horizontally far then it goes behind some trees you don't see it then signal lost oh okay what i did okay. and uh, then i i move this antenna the the new antenna I installed i moved it then i see signal coming but it's still weak then uh, stop the, the drone in the same spot so it don't move the drone and connect the other antenna and I see full bar like uh, all five lines or whatever five bars on this time because it's so so strong signal okay so I'll let you go that's the way I reset my drone uh, remote control doesn't mean it works the same thing in yours see you later bye bye